Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunshine Hills Church Online. This has been quite the week, hasn't it? And we want to just welcome you to uh, be a part of this brand new experience with us. Though we can't gather together in person at this time, uh, we are committed to creating community as we navigate through this new reality that our, we find ourselves in. And, and this doing church online is the first steps in that direction. So whether you're watching at home on your phone or on your laptop or uh, at the breakfast table in your living room, maybe you're still in bed in pajamas, we just want to welcome you to church this morning and declare together that we are the church unified this morning. We recognize in the absence of physical community, we are still bound together by the spiritual community found in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And know this, church, we are thinking of you. We are praying for you. We have not gone anywhere. And I truly believe that in these uncertain times, we have the opportunity to show the world what it truly means to be the church. This could be our finest hour. So would you join me in that declaration that we will be the church during these times? This morning, we are in the final week of our collection of talks looking at the life of David. And if this is your first time with us, uh, our previous messages in this series are all available on our YouTube channel, Sunshine Hills Church. They're all in audio format only, as this is our first attempt going uh, live on video. And we, we designed this series not to hold up the man David on a pedestal and say, look at David, look how great he is, but to look at him and to look at his life and to say, what can we learn from how he lived? What are the examples that he set for us? And today's talk is entitled, A Matter of Legacy. What is the legacy of David's life? How does his legacy inform our lives today? Uh, and maybe even greater than that, what legacy are we currently creating for those that will come after us? But first, let's define what we mean by the word legacy. Is legacy the passing on of all of the nerdy things that I love to my daughters? Uh, Audrey and I spent a good portion of last year watching all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films in order from beginning to end. And I'm not going to lie, it warms a father's heart to see his daughter just become enraptured by that story and fall in love with the characters. I, I feel like I really won that day as I passed on my love of all things near to my daughter. But is that, is that what legacy is? Is, is legacy the, the trophies and the mementos that are stored downstairs uh, of years past in youth ministry? Is it, is it the memories of, of victories we won and events that we had? Is that the legacy that we want to be remembered by? Is legacy a collection of biblical commentaries passed down through Pastor Tom's family and now in residence on my office bookshelf? What is legacy? Is it the decisions being made right now in our world today in response to the COVID-19 pandemic that will forever alter how we live now and perhaps even into the future? Is legacy how I speak to my children, how I love my wife? Is it the mistakes that I've made or the victories that I've won? Is it what will be written on the headstone of my grave? What is legacy? It is my belief that legacy speaks to how we live and what we leave behind. To those who are with us now and to those who will come after us. Legacy speaks to how we live and what we will leave behind. Legacy inspires and informs. It sets an example of how to live and perhaps how not to live. Legacy is what can catapult future generations towards greatness. Would you turn with me in your Bibles this morning to the book of First Chronicles? First Chronicles chapter 28 and 29. Now, we're not going to read all of those chapters, but we're going to use uh, what happens here to inform our discussion this morning. So in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and 29, this comes near the end of David's life. And I want to read from verse 1 to just get us into the context of what is happening. 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 1 says, David assembled at Jerusalem all the officials of Israel, the officials of the tribes, the officers of the divisions that served the king, the commanders of thousands, the commanders of hundreds, the stewards of all the property and livestock of the king and his sons, together with the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the seasoned warriors. Then King David rose to his feet and said, Hear me, my brothers and my people. I had it in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God. And I made preparations for building, but God said to me, you may not build a house for my name, for you are a man of war and have shed blood. Jump down to verse 6. Verse 6 says, he said to me, it is Solomon, your son, 
who shall build my house and my courts. For I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. I will establish his kingdom forever if he continues strong in keeping my commandments and my rules as he is today. And then here in verse 8, kind of our theme verse for this morning. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel, the assembly of the Lord and in the hearing of our God, observe and seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God, that you may possess this good land and leave it for an inheritance to your children after you forever. In speaking to his son Solomon and the nation that he leads, we're going to see in David's words some of the defining aspects of his legacy revealed. Aspects that I pray will define my legacy and I pray will define your legacy. And that last verse is so important, the idea that, that you will possess this good land, how you live now, and you will leave it for an inheritance, what you leave behind. It is a matter of legacy. Let's pray as we open God's word this morning. God, would you speak to us this morning, God, no matter where we are gathered, no matter how we are viewing this, God, your word is true no matter what. And we pray that as we turn to your word this morning, as we open the pages of the Bible, God, that you would speak to hearts, that you would speak to minds, God, that you would inform us uh, and inspire us in regards to this idea of legacy, what that means, what that looks like, and how we can look to what David left behind to inform what we want to leave behind. God, I pray that you would just be here in this place and in all the places we gather this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, when we think of David, there's a number of things that come to mind. And, and first and foremost, I think we think of David as the, the shepherd who, who wrestled the lion and the bear in the wilderness, who fought the giant Goliath on the battlefield, the, the warrior David. And when we think of David in that manner, one of the aspects of his legacy is this, that he demonstrated courage in the face of adversity. He demonstrated courage in the face of adversity. But the question is, where did that courage come from? And in 1 Chronicles 28, we glean some understanding towards that. In verse 20, it says, Then David said to Solomon, his son, Be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, is with you. He will not leave you or forsake you until all the work for the service of the house of the Lord is finished. Did you catch that? Be strong and and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord God, my God, he is with you. He will not leave you and he will not forsake you. David's courage was firmly rooted in his faith and his trust in God. His courage was firmly rooted in his faith and his trust in God. A number of years ago, a pastor by the name of Erwin McManus, he pastors Mosaic Church in, in Los Angeles, California. He said something that stuck with me all these years, and he said, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the absence of self. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the absence of self. It's the idea that when we face adversity, we may have fear. Sure, that's a human tendency. But if we are full of ourselves, we're full of our own ideas and thoughts and strength, we're going to cave but if we are able to, as John says, he must increase and I must decrease. If we are able to decrease in self and increase in who God is, courage rises in those situations. Courage ultimately is the knowledge of who our God is and what he can do in us and through us. David acted from a place of faith, from a deep conviction that God was with him in every circumstance. Be it wild animal, be it giant warrior or advancing army, David acted from a place of faith and trust, knowing who his God was and what his God was capable of. And when the time came to pass the mantle of leadership to his son, what does he say? Solomon, be strong and courageous, for my, my Lord, the God of, of, of Israel, is with you. The same words that God spoke to Joshua after Moses passed. You see, church, the legacy of God's people is one of courage. Based in the knowledge and the understanding of who our God is, it's passed down from generation to generation that we are called to be strong and to be courageous. So I ask you this morning, how do you respond in the face of adversity? What is your default when adversity comes your way? Is it fear? Is it defense? Is it retreat? You know, in our world right now, we are facing adversity the likes of which we have never seen. Where are you acting from this morning? Are you acting from a place of faith? Or are you acting from a place of fear? We declare this morning faith over fear. We declare that God is with us 
that he is with, that he is for us and that he will not forsake us in this time. Wherever you are this morning, wherever you are watching this, God is with you. He is for you and he will not forsake you in this time. And this is true no matter what the circumstance. This is true before the last few weeks. This is true right now in what we're currently facing. And this will be true after we get through this. God is for you and he will not forsake you. And out of that knowledge and truth, courage and boldness arises. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, Paul declares to Timothy, he says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and of self-control. So I ask you, will you live a life that points people towards faith and trust in God? Will your legacy def- be defined by courage and not by fear? Now, when we think of David, another thing that we often think of is David as the musician, as the poet. David is the one who, who played the harp and danced before the Lord and wrote the Psalms. He was a worshiper through and through. Because of that, we can say that another defining aspect of his legacy is that David lived a life of unwavering devotion to God. In Acts chapter 13, we've mentioned this numerous times for this series that God says, David was a man after my own heart, a man after my own heart, a legacy defined by the pursuit of God in his personal life. Can the same be said of you and me? that we have a legacy defined by the pursuit of God and how we live our life and our personal life? Is that what we're passing on to those who are coming after us? I think of my kids. Am I passing on to them a legacy of devotion? When they look to me, do they see someone who is sold out for Jesus, who is passionate and unwavering in their devotion towards God? Or am I leaving behind some other legacy for them? Check out the charge that David gives to his son Solomon in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. It says, and you, Solomon, my son, know the God of your father and serve him with a whole heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands every plan and thought. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Do you see those words? David to his son, know the God of your father and serve him with your whole heart and with a willing mind. If you seek him, he will be found by you. I can just feel the emotion in David's words there, saying, whatever, whatever you do, son, whatever you do, know him, serve him, seek him, be devoted to him in every aspect. More than anything, this is what I want for my own kids. And even when words fail, I just pray that the actions of my life reveal a life lived in devotion. But here's the thing, not only in his own life or in his son's life, but David also inspired a nation towards devotion in God, a renewal of worship as priority within the nation that he led, honor where honor is due. He lived his life in such a way that he led those around him to seek God more and to serve God and to live their lives in devotion to the Lord. What an inspiration. And once again, can the same be said of you and me? is what we're demonstrating day to day, a life of devotion. When we go to work, when we are out with our peers, when we're with our friends and our family, are we living a life that demonstrates devotion? Is that what people are seeing in us? Will your legacy be defined by an unshakable devotion to God, seeking him, serving him, and honoring him in every aspect of your life? When we think of, when we think of David... One other aspect we think of is this, that he had a heart for the house, that he had a desire to build the temple for God. But here's the thing, he never, he never completed that project. He was never able to see it come to fruition. Rather, it's something that he passed on to the next generation. And as the final defining aspect of his legacy, we can see that David set a precedent for what it looks like to empower and to equip the next generation. First Chronicles chapter 28, starting in verse 11, says, Then David gave Solomon his son the plan. David gave his son the plan for the temple and the plan of, of all that he had in mind for the courts of the house of the Lord. David passed on the plan to his son. And then down in, in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 2 and 3, he continues and he says, So I have provided the resources for the house of my God, so far as I was able. Moreover, 
In addition to all that I provided for the holy house, I have a treasure of my own of gold and silver. And because of my devotion to the house of my God, I give it to the house of my God. Did you catch that? David passed on the plan and the resources to his son and to the nation. He empowered and he equipped those who were coming after him to see something amazing come to fruition. He laid the groundwork. He set the direction. He pointed out the trajectory of where they need to be headed. For the next generation, he left them the resources to complete the task. You see, it's one thing to talk about setting up the next generation for success. It's another thing altogether to actually do the work to make that happen. We see here in the words of Scripture that David did the work. He put the plan together. He passed it off. He spent years accumulating the resources needed to fund the project, to build the project. And rather than hoarding it for himself, he gave it wholeheartedly over to his son and to the next generation to see the project come to completion. Are we doing the work? Are we as a church doing the work to empower and to equip those who are coming after us? And take note, it's not just about the plan and the resources. It's also about setting vision and setting direction. It's about inspiring the next generation to be part of something bigger than themselves. It's about inspiring the next generation to stay the course in their faith. David wasn't just passing off something in hopes that they would take it to heart and complete it. He passed off a vision and a direction, and he inspired a whole generation to take what he had started and to see it come to completion. And then there's the big heart check in all of this. You see, David allowed someone else to accomplish the dream that had been placed on his heart. He allowed someone else to accomplish what God had placed on his heart. Are we allowing the next generation to do greater things than us? Are we okay with passing off our dreams and seeing them realized by someone else? Will your legacy be defined as one that empowers and equips the next generation towards greatness? As we come to a close this morning, would you turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 7? What we find in 2 Samuel chapter 7 is a very important part of Scripture, often known as the, uh, as the Davidic covenant. And fancy way of what it's saying there is it's God's promises to David as spoken through Nathan the prophet. And the Davidic covenant, covenant basically is this. It's an unconditional covenant made between God and David through which God promises David and Israel that the Messiah, Jesus Christ himself, would come from the lineage of David and the tribe of Judah and would establish a kingdom that would endure forever. We see that in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 13 and then 16. It says, he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. David's greatest legacy is Jesus. David's greatest legacy is Jesus, which begs the question, is your legacy Jesus? Is my legacy Jesus? Do our lives, how we how we live now and in what we will leave behind, do our lives lead people towards Jesus? Do our lives demonstrate his love and his grace? Do our lives reveal his peace and his goodness? Do, his, do our lives reflect his heart for people? Is our legacy Jesus? How will you and I be remembered as someone who was funny, someone who is caring, someone who served their community well, someone who loved their kids, or will we be remembered as someone who revealed Jesus to our world, who demonstrated what it means to love one another, who, who acted in a way that we were Jesus' hands and feet to a world in need. And church, especially in these challenging times we find ourselves in now, times that are full of fear and uncertainty, times where people are looking for answers, is your life pointing others towards the one who is, in, who is peace amidst chaos? Is your life pointing people towards the one who is a solid rock and a sure foundation? Is your life pointing people towards the one who holds our world and all that is going on in his hands? Is your life pointing towards Jesus? So as we come to an end this morning, I ask you in your family, in your community, in your workplace, where you go to school, wherever you may find yourself, 
What is the legacy that your life is writing? Let's pray. God, I ask that this morning as we have looked at the life of David, his, some of his final words to his son and, and to the nation that he led, Lord God, we get a glimpse of the legacy that he left behind, a legacy that not only impacted the very next generation, but, but has trickled down through history and has application and impact for us today. God, we look towards David, and I, I, I want to have a legacy defined by courage. I want to have a legacy defined by devotion and by someone who empowers and equips next generation. God, I pray that that would be our heart for every single person here. That would be our heart, that we would want to have a legacy defined by such incredible characteristics. God, I pray that you'd help us be mindful of what legacy we are leaving behind. God, as we just said, that ultimately our legacy needs to be you. Our legacy needs to be Jesus to our world. So this morning, I just want to ask, wherever you're at, wherever you're at this morning, if you've never made a personal decision for Jesus Christ, you have that opportunity right now. Whether you are at home, whether you are in bed, whether you're on the couch, it's as simple as just saying, Jesus, I need you. I recognize that I've made mistakes. I recognize that I've sinned. God, I want you to come into my life. I want you to fill me with your love and your grace. God, would you forgive me of all of my sins? God, I ask now that you become my Lord and my Savior. God, I give my life over to you. And if that's you this morning, it's as simple as just saying that prayer on your couch, knowing that God has come and he's met you wherever you're at. And, you know, if that's you, if you've made that choice this morning, I want to encourage you, reach out to someone, text someone, call someone, and let them know that you just made an important decision, that you just asked Jesus to come and be a part of your life. Church, this morning, I, and obviously I can't see if any hands are being raised, but I just want to pray for a few things. If you are struggling with fear in these times, I just pray for faith over fear for you. I pray for a spirit of courage to be emboldened within you. I pray that you would know for sure who your God is and what he's capable of, and that you would live from a mindset of faith and not from fear. God, I pray for each person here uh, watching this morning, Lord God, there would, they would live lives that, let, that resonate with legacy. God, I pray we'd each live lives that resonate with legacy. We'd be, we'd be mindful of how we live now and what we are leaving behind. We'd be mindful of, of what we're passing on to our kids and to the next generation. And we'd be mindful of what others see in us. God, I pray that they would see courage. Courage not in our own strength and ability, but courage in our knowledge of who God is. Pray that they would see devotion. They would see someone who honors God and who has devoted themselves to, to seeking and to serving him. Pray that they would see people that are not so full of themselves that they want to hold on to everything, but they are people who would release and empower and equip those around them and those who come after them to do even greater things than we ourselves are capable of. And I pray more than anything that when people look to us, that they would see Jesus, that they would see Jesus. We ask and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to thank you all for joining us online this morning. I hope that was a, a good experience for you, probably a new one for most of you. But I want to encourage you to keep checking out our Facebook page, our church website, our weekly email. We'll keep communicating with you as to how you can get online to see all the things we're going to be posting in the weeks to come. And this time I'm going to ask Pastor Lottie to come. She's just going to bring a few announcements to keep you posted on what's going on during these times. Well, good day. Um, this is the first time ever I've ever thought um, in my lifetime that I would see a worldwide pajama day. Craziness. Never thought that was going to happen, but here it is. So whatever circumstances you're in this morning, as we like to keep you informed, um, one thing that usually happens in our church service is that during this time, we're passing on offering bags and giving people a chance to worship with our tithes and our offerings. So you might say, well, is Lottie going to come to the to the door and, and say, hey, do you have anything today to, to give towards the church? Well, no. What we're going to ask you to do is um, you can give in several ways. You can get use e-transfers. Um, you could uh, write a check. Um, you know, there's still such things as that, and you can send it in. You could come by the church as um, Lynn is uh, here during the uh, most days and so you can come and you can use the debit machine bring in cash or or checks but we also want you to know that we are also praying for those that uh, for jobs that we know that there's a lot of people who are being laid off or just don't have work right now and that we are praying for you and so we're praying for your finances but we want to just let you know how you can be involved with the finances here at Sunshine Hills that um, that we are still open for business in that way and 
um, just to remind you too that we want to stay connected with you. And so um, you can uh, write us through Facebook on our page. You can email. You can call. You can call Pastor any of the pastors, and we would um, get back to you. We want to be able to reach out and know your prayer needs. We also just want to remind you that at this time that we ha have canceled all of our midweek um, ministries to our kids, our J-12s, to our youth. And um, we're taking this in three-week week increments. And so on April the um, 6th, um, we will be making another statement about what is our next three weeks going to look like. And so... Um, this Sunday, of course, we've just had, and, and this is where we've posted online. We'll do that up until April 5th, and, um, and then we will, again, let you know what is going on. So anyways, we want to say um, have a good day. God bless you. We love you. Take care. Good night.